pica, a tendency or craving to eat substances other than normal food, such as clay, plaster, or ashes, occurring during childhood or pregnancy, or as a symptom of disease. 16th July 2016 I didn't notice Gemma running to the toilet in the middle of the night. I, I woke to the sound of her dry heaves, but as I came to and saw the sliver of light escape from beneath the bathroom door, I knew it was her. I entered slowly and asked if she was okay. She stayed silent for a moment, catching her breath. I'm pregnant, she said. My body chilled at the news. Are you sure? I asked. Without taking her head out of the toilet bowl, she held up the pregnancy test. Are you going to say anything? She asked. As the news sunk in, the initial anxiety turned to excitement, and my smile grew. 30th July, 2016. When I got home from work, I cooked dinner. I did my best to steam the vegetables and grill the chicken, though I... I didn't do a good job. I think I may have overdone the broccoli, I said, taking a bite and feeling it turn to mush in my mouth. I know you like it all Dante. She used her fork to push the food around her plate. I'm really sorry. I did overcook it, didn't I? No, it's not that, she said, trailing off. I can make you something else if you like, I offered. She continued to play with her food. Hey. Gemma, if you could have any kind of food in the world, what would it be? She perked up. Watermelon and cream cheese. That is an odd combination, I replied, smirking. I don't know, I've been craving it all week. She pushed her fork into a piece of chicken and raised it to her mouth. She hesitated at first, then closed her eyes and chewed. Almost instantly, she rose from her chair and she ran to the sink, spitting out the slightly chewed meat. I, I, I'm so sorry. I didn't think that I cooked it that bad. I don't know what's wrong with me, she said before breaking down into tears. I got up and hugged her. It's okay, sweetheart. It's probably the pregnancy. I reached out a hand and caressed her stomach. You're growing a child in you. It's only natural you're gonna... not feel normal. <laughs> Do you want me to go out? I can get you that watermelon and cream cheese. No, that's silly, she said. I don't mind at all. I'll, I'll be back in 15 minutes. She stayed over the sink and I left for the shops. The dog whined as he saw me put on my coat and get my keys. Don't worry, buddy. You'll get some chicken when I get back. He cocked his head to one side. I quietened down. I returned with the watermelon and cream cheese. Gemma was still nowhere to be seen. In the kitchen, our plates were now on the side, covered in cling film. The dog followed me in, wagging its tail. I took the plastic off my wife's plate, took out the chicken breast, ripping it up piece by piece. Ziggy jumped up eagerly and chomped down the meat. Hey, Gemma, I called up the stairs, holding a plate of fruit and cheese. Have you gone to bed? I heard nothing in response. When I reached the bedroom, I saw her sleeping. I placed the plate on the side table. Jeff, is that you? Yeah, yeah I, I made you your food. She sat up. You went to bed early. I'm feeling exhausted. I handed her the plate. My god, that's amazing, she said, shoveling down the food as if she hadn't eaten in days. I took the plate and returned to the kitchen to eat my cold food and wash up. And by the time I returned, she was asleep. 29th August, 2016. We sat in the reception area, waiting for the doctor to call us in for our first scan. Gemma's leg jiggled with anticipation. It's gonna be alright, I said, rubbing her knee. Gemma Hamilton was read out in a robotic voice, and I saw her name on a small LCD screen on the other side of the room. She audibly winced as the cold gel was applied to her belly. Let's see how the little one is getting on, the female doctor said, looking away at the small black and white screen. She moved the device around, pressing harder than I expected. I wanted to tell her to be more gentle, not hurt the baby. There it is, she said, pointing out the screen. I don't see anything, Gemma said. Look, it's just there, I replied seeing the small dot. No larger than a monkey nut. Gemma stayed silent, staring in awe at the child thing that was growing within her. This was the first time I really felt I was going to be a father. It was a proud day for me. 13th October, 2016.
I had stopped at the grocery store on the way back home to pick up Gemma's latest craving. Steak, tartare, and ice cream. Just thinking about it made me heave. But this wasn't the worst she'd asked for. We had rice pudding and mayonnaise, uh, peanut butter and pickles, and raw eggs. So, today felt like just another day. I placed the groceries in the kitchen. Night was drawing in, but it wasn't dark yet. I saw Gemma crouching in the yard. I opened the back door and called out. Her face turned to me, almost feral. Black stains covering her face. Her eyes were large with surprise. Jeff? She said before wiping her mouth with her nightgown sleeve. Hey, what's going on? I asked, trying hard not to appear upset. She flopped back into the sitting position, her bare feet dirty and her hands dark with grime. I peered around the yard, seeing little divots all over the grass. Have you been eating dirt? I asked. Her eyes locked onto mine, so confused and innocent. I don't know what happened. I just really wanted it. Um, I felt disgusted. Then I saw her now proud stomach protrude out from beneath her nighty. Let me run you a bath. I got the ground beef and the ice cream, I said, and I opened the back door again. I'm sorry. I, I don't really want that now. 26th of November, 2016. Gemma hadn't craved anything for the past couple of days, which was a relief, as I had always been away with work. I arrived and was exhausted. There was a note on the sideboard saying that she had already made my lunch, and it was, it was in the fridge. She had spent the day in bed. Surprised, I opened the fridge and I took out a plate of sandwiches. I browsed my phone while I ate. It was nice to have food made for me again. That had been a long time. I gazed at her as she slept. Is that you, Jeff? She asked, turning to stretch, then yawning. I was just watching you sleep, I said, with a big smile on my face. That last, it's the last scan on Monday. Looking forward to it? She nodded with her eyes closed. Large grin covering her face. She stretched again. You need me to get you anything for today? Pickles and cloves? Uh, jelly and hamburgers? She chuckled. No, not today, she replied. You mind if I just sleep? Surprised, I responded. Good. Uh, maybe that part of your pregnancy is over. Maybe. She said. Maybe. I love you, Jeff. I love you, too. I began to close the door. I'm just going to walk Ziggy. Oh, he's not here at the moment. He's in my mom's. Really? Your mom hates dogs. She did some grocery shopping for me and offered to look after him until he got back. Oh. Uh, okay, I said, slightly disappointed. 28th November, 2016. The ultrasound of our baby was... It's incredible. I could see its face, its fingers. You could tell it was a girl just by looking at those features. Gemma squeezed my hand so happy and proud. A tear rolled down her face. I'd be lying if I said the same didn't happen to me. Oh, when we returned home, I phoned Gemma's mom. Hi, Helen, I said. Oh, hi, Jeff. How's my gorgeous daughter doing? Very well, thank you. Uh, we just uh, we just had our last scan. Um, she, well, I mean, it looks like a very healthy child. Is it a girl? She said happily. Oh, sorry, we're not supposed to know. Gemma wanted it to be a surprise, but it's, uh, it's obvious. <laughs> Have you thought of a name yet? Uh, no. She doesn't know that I know. <laughs> well, you have to tell her, Helen demanded. She doesn't want to know, so unless she asks, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I heard a sigh. Oh, thank you for looking after Ziggy. Uh, do you mind if I pick him up today? I missed the furry little thing. Sorry? Uh, Gemma, Gemma said that you were looking after him? No such thing. I hate dogs. Chill ran down my spine. Are you sure? Um, she said that you took him when you went grocery shopping for her. I don't know what's up with that girl. I never went shopping for her. I offered. I offered plenty of times, but she had said that she had all the food that she needed. Oh. Um, it must be my mistake, I said. Uh, well, that, it's, it's good to speak to you again. Likewise, make sure that you kiss my little granddaughter before bed. 
I will, I said. Jenna was in the living room reading a book. I, um, I don't know how to approach the subject. I didn't want to stress her, you know. Um, hey, I, I was on the phone with your mother. Uh, she says that she's not looking after Ziggy. Gemma stared at me, something vacant in her eyes. Gemma, where is Ziggy? She remained silent as her eyes welled up. He... He ran away when I answered the door to a cold caller. I guess that he thought it was you, and when it wasn't, he just ran off. I'm so sorry. I've been calling the shelters every day. She broke down and cried. I didn't know where to be angry or upset, but seeing her, the mother of my child, I couldn't stay mad at her. Honey, uh, it's okay. That's, I'm sure he's fine, I said, holding back the panic that my little guy was out there somewhere. We cried in each other's arms, and I, I tried to think of other things, things that would make me feel better. Look, can I uh, make you something to eat? Can I get you something? No, no. I've got meat left over from when Mom went shopping for me. I can do that myself. I was about to tell her that her mother hadn't gone shopping for her, but, but I stopped myself. I spent the afternoon phoning shelters to see if Ziggy had turned up. Unfortunately, no one had seen a dog matching the description. Gemma cooked. I sat down at the table as she served dinner. You sure that you're up to this? I asked, admitting after she had spent the last hour slaving over the stove. Yeah, I like cooking for you, and besides, my cravings have gone away. Beef casserole, she said it was. The meat was so tender. Where did you get it? I never had meat like this. Oh, Mom got it from the butchers when you were away. I smiled and continued to eat. As I finished it, I said, you blew me away with that. <laughs> Let me go wash up. Are you sure? Yeah, that, I mean, it was the best meal I've had since you got pregnant. The least I can do. If that's the case, I'm going to go up to bed. Yeah, you deserve it, I said. I spent the next 15 minutes cleaning the cutlery and the plates. I opened the front door to take the leftovers to the bin, and I lifted the lid and slid the uneaten food into the container. And just before I closed it, something glinted in the light, and I stopped. I took a closer look and reached in. I shivered as my hand touched the day's old food, and... And I pulled it out. I panicked, picking it up. It was Ziggy's collar. I went to the kitchen to clean off the detrius off the dog collar before taking a deep breath and returning to the bedroom. <laughs> Anger consumed me as I held the collar up, wanting to shout at my wife. I did, I did the best that I could to calm myself before asking. What is Ziggy's collar doing in the bin? She pretended to be asleep. Gemma, wake up! I demanded. Hmm... She said, ignoring my question. Did you kill him? She was silent. D did you kill my dog? I was hungry, she said, rolling back to her side, covering her head. What? I shouted. Anxiety and panic filled me. What the, what the hell do you mean? It was the cravings, she said, throwing back the covers. You don't know what it's like. What? Is that, is that what I ate tonight? I asked as a reflex. She was silent. And, and the sandwich? Nothing. I think I'm going to be sick. Now you know how I feel, she said, shouting at me, tears streaming down her face, her eyes red. I dry heaved over the toilet bowl, heave after heave, until the partly digested food finally came up. And I looked at it in the bowl, pieces, pieces, of my best friend, gray and mutated. I pulled the flush and looked away. I'm so sorry, Jeff, I couldn't help myself. Where's the rest of him? Did you, did you eat all of him? In the freezer. How much? About a half. 16th December 2016. Some of them looked so forlorn, others really happy to see me, and they were just happy to see someone new. Um, what's wrong with this one? I said. He's blind in one eye. Lame, hind leg. I'll take him, I said. You sure? We have plenty of others who are in much better condition. He'll be fine. I filled out the paperwork, and the dog was brought out. He limped, pulled against the collar, and choked every time he resisted. Thank you, I said, picking him up. No, thank you, sir. It's a wonderful type of person to look past the disabilities, adopt a dog, so many ailments. I feigned a smile, and I left. The dog pissed himself at the passenger seat as we pulled away. My heart sank. But it's better him than one of the others. I mean, they could find real families. Once you take care and love them. When we returned home, Gemma was in the living room. I haven't named him, I said. I'm going to go out for a while. I disconnected his lead. He wagged his tail and looked up at me. 
I ignored him. I shut the door and I drove to the gas station to buy cigarettes. 21st, February 2017. Jim asked when I was going to go back to the pound. I'd been putting her off for weeks. I'd been asking if there was anything else that I could get her. Any? There's this annoying squirrel in the garden if she wants that. But she doesn't. She knows what she wants. I can't go back to the pound. Three dogs in three months. They're going to get suspicious. I've seen this one dog running around the streets at night. It looked, it looked like it might have belonged to someone at some point. Its toes were painted, but then... The way that its fur was, it, it hadn't been cared for in months. 12th March, 2017. Gemma was in some distress. Um, I refused to indulge her pica. I couldn't do it anymore. There's too many innocent animals. It had already suffered, and though she cried, I was done. I, I had to push past it. There was only two weeks left to go. I told her that I'd get her anything that she wanted apart from that. She wasn't happy. 15th March, 2017. Gemma had cold sweats. She'd been shouting that she thought that she was losing the baby. We had three, three different doctors visit. They said there was nothing wrong with her, that she just needed bed rest. She didn't cry and demand when they were there. They, they didn't see it. I was so scared that we'd lose the baby. 19th March, 2017. Gemma had a fever. She refused all food. I called off work. Spent time in bed with her, holding her close. I felt the baby kick. She was almost there. You know, she was just, just a couple more days. That's all she needed. 21st March, 2017. A piercing pain woke me in the night. Initially, I thought my arm had fallen asleep, but as I opened my eyes, I saw Gemma on top of me, holding me down, sinking her teeth into my arm. Stop it! That hurts! I cried. But the manacle look in her eyes told me that she wouldn't. I almost passed out as her teeth dug further. She flicked her head back, ripping off a piece of my flesh. She scuttled off the bed and crouched in the corner, munching on my muscle and skin. She, she moaned with pleasure, a peculiar urge being sated. You're crazy, I shouted, running into the bathroom, blood pouring from my arm. I wrapped the toilet roll around it until the blood soaked through the paper and it fell away. I grabbed a towel and I held it, re-entering the bedroom. I, I saw that Gemma was asleep on the floor, more peaceful than I've seen her in weeks. 23rd of March, 2017. I had been sleeping in my car. I had my phone on me just in case she needed me. She slept the whole of yesterday, and today she wanted to apologize. She rapped on the window of my car and startled me awake. She held her hands together in front of her, pleading with me to forgive her. Her muffled voice barely audible through the glass. Tears streaming down her cheeks. I was conflicted. I hadn't sought medical attention for my arm. And throbbed. She was only a few days from being due, and I had promised myself I'd do everything that I could to make sure that she was comfortable, except, except allowing her to eat more of me. Rationally, I knew that she wasn't, she isn't a cannibal. It was just the cravings that they had to end when she gave birth. They had to. I opened the car door anxiously, and she stood there with her arms out open. I'm sorry, Jeff, I really am, she pleaded. I don't know what got over me. I'm scared. Reluctantly, I embraced her. Her crying stopped as I allowed her to hug me tightly. I kept my distance from her that day. She could tell that I was doing it, and it upset her. You think I'm going to do it again, don't you? She said, waddling over to the dining table, pressing one hand to her lower back. That was the first time I saw her do that. I wonder if it was a show, you know, put on to make me think she was more vulnerable than she was. And when she sat, she winced. Made me think it was genuine. Can I get you something to eat? I asked, refusing to advance further than the threshold of the room. No, I'm fine. What have you eaten? Not much, but I'll make do with what we have in the house. So you have no cravings? None at all. None at all? Nope. I was suspicious. She had gone long periods of time without them. So you're fine then? Yeah. Okay, I said. Looking at my watch. I'm going to call work. I'm going to tell them I'm not coming in. I spent the rest of the day in the living room trying to watch the TV, but having an eye on the doorway. In case Gemma decided to run in. At bedtime, I said I was going to sleep on the couch. But she didn't like it, but didn't put up much of a fuss. As she left, I waited until I could hear the floorboards creak overhead before closing the door. I sat on the couch in the dark. And I stared at the door like... I couldn't sleep here. There was no lock. I continued to stare, feeling my heart race in my chest. 
The toilet flushed, a few footsteps in the creak of a bed as Gemma got in. I waited another ten minutes, then quietly slid the second couch in front of the door endwise, jamming it against the other couch on the far side of the room, making a furniture T-shape, securing my fort for the evening. I laid down and closed my eyes. My arm throbbed with the beat of my heart, though it didn't take long for my exhaustion. It eventually allowed me to fall asleep. 24th of March, 2017. A delicate rocking woke me. At first I didn't know what it was, and then in the low light I saw the door handle jiggle quietly in the other side of the room. Light strobed in as the door opened and shut gently. Gemma, is that you? I asked, still groggy from sleep. Jeff, can I come in? I'm not sure that's a good idea. I'm your wife. Please let me in. Do you need anything? I'll gladly prepare you some food and bring it up to you. Can you just let me in? No, I said calmly. Jeff, you're pissing me off. She said, her voice slightly raised. The door pressed against the load-bearing couch with force. I got up and held it in place. Hell, Jeff. Damn it, Jeff, let me in. No, calm down and let's talk. She didn't respond, and I sighed with relief. A large thunk and the door opened as Gemma slammed into it with her shoulder. The couch twisted, allowing her to force her head through the opening. Her eyes were wild and maniacal. It lit from the bright light of the hallway. Give me what I need. Give me what the baby craves. Panicking, I pushed the couch back against the door, trying my best not to crush my wife's face. Calm down, Gemma, okay? We can get through this, I said, gripping the couch tightly. Just a teeny weeny bit off your gut. I mean, you're fat anyway, Gemma. Please, I pleaded. Open this goddamn door! She tried to push her stomach through with no regard for the baby growing inside of her. I let go of the couch and raced to the door, pushing her back into the hallway. She grabbed my left arm and bit. Ah! I exclaimed, pulling my arm back in the room and slamming the door. I held the handle up and felt her press down in resistance. Gemma, Gemma, let's cool it, okay? Let me get you another dog. I'll, I'll go now. I don't want a dog. I want you. You're my husband. It's right. No! I shouted, pulling the handle up so hard I thought that it would break in my grasp. She screamed in rebellion, her voice shrill with fear and panic. I prayed to a god I didn't know existed that our baby girl would be okay. It was only a few more days, only a few more until this madness was over. I promised I'd be strong enough for the both of us. I didn't know how long it was until she stopped screaming and since she left. It was only when I heard the creaks from above that I, I realized that I could let go. I slid down in front of the door, the side of the couch staring me in the face. My heart felt like it was going to break free from my chest. Small slivers of moonlight crept in through the living room curtains and illuminated the swelling bite mark on my arm. I was relieved to find no flesh missing. I replaced the couch, jamming it in front of the door again. I didn't return to sleep. For five hours I sat, gazing at the handle ready to pounce if it moved again. As the sun rose and gradually lit the room through the breaks in the curtain, I, I stood up and I quietly removed the temporary barricade. In the hallway, I called up. Gemma, are you there? I heard nothing in response. Seeing the large metal flashlight propped up under the coat hooks, I picked it up, its cold metal heft, asking me if I was willing to use it. I held it anyway, knowing that I wouldn't. I arrived at the top of the stairs and saw the bedroom door stood open. The soft light of the nightlight warmly lit the room in defiance of what I saw. I didn't realize I dropped the flashlight until the dull thud of it hit and my foot made me jump. For the first time in a while, Gemma was peaceful. I mean, I smiled at first, seeing her holding our baby in her arms. The blood distracted me. I've been looking forward to seeing my wife hold our child for as long as I can remember. The taboo that presented itself broke my heart. They were drenched in blood. Her stomach torn asunder. She'd finally satisfied her craving. Our baby didn't cry. She was as silent as my wife. I approached the bed knowing Gemma was no longer going to lunge at me. I closed her eyes gently with my fingers. I wish she could have waited those, those last few days before seeing our child, but she couldn't. Her urge was too strong. If only I let her take it from me, it, it might not have happened. I took a towel from the bathroom and wrapped it around what was left of our child. And I cried. 30th March. 2017. Today is Saturday and I'm exhausted. My arm is in excruciating pain. If anything, the pain's increased in the last few days. I'm not I'm trying not to think about it, but when I look at the bandages, I see the dried blood and the yellow ring that's crusted around the edge. I don't want to take it off and check. I know it's bad and it's going to get worse. 
I rock my baby in the cradle side to side. She's sleeping so soundly. I did my best to swaddle her, but the... This is the third time the blood still seeps through. If I squint, I can pretend she's just... She's just... Sleeping. And I give myself a few more hours before I make the call. The fix is barely masking the smell from the bed now. The one next to us. Sleep well, my little baby girl. Sleep well. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you for watching tonight's video. I want to talk to you about one quick thing uh, before we get into the real outro here, uh, and that's going to be the Australian fires that are currently taking place. I I'm pretty sure everybody has seen on their social media or on the news or what have you about what's taking place in Australia right now. The fires are raging out of control. There's something like 1.5 million acres that are currently on fire. It's pushing animals towards extinction, forcing people out of their homes. Many of them YouTubers and other uh, creepypasta narrators um, that you probably listen to here. Um, but one thing that actually kind of gets to me is that there's there's a lot of awareness about what's taking place down there. There's a lot of photos and videos I'm pretty sure that you've all seen, but nobody's really talking about where you can go to to be able to donate, uh, to be able to help um, either firefighters or relief funds or anything like that. And that's what I want to try to bring to you guys, or at least have you guys try to share around even if you're not able to donate. If you look in the description down below, there's four different links there uh, that I'm going to have on the videos for the next couple of weeks. Um, and hopefully we can, and we, I mean... <laughs> all of you uh, can be able to um, share this around and all of us together can be able to actually get some more eyes on where we can be able to go to help. I mean, yeah, we're a group of people that likes horror stories, horror movies, horror, what have you. But um, I think one thing we can do that's at least powerful for us is we have the ability to minimize the amount of horror in real life. Oh, uh, so thank you guys so much for watching or listening. If you're listening to this on the podcast available on Spotify and on Apple and on SoundCloud and on Google or wherever you get your podcasts from, or if you're listening on the podcast, then thank you for watching on YouTube and subscribing to Mr. Creepypasta. And a very big thank you to my patrons from patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, such as Dr. Strawberry, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Chumpinski. Brianna Ventine Jensen, Stephanie Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, G Weevil 3, Diane Kraus, Asia, the Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Nico Kyle, Caleb Dugall, Daniel Polson, Dante Rao, The Last Blade Song, The Ginger Bros, Don Mewmeister, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Sky Harbor, Finley, Steampunk Center, Rafael Rodriguez, and Optimistic Avocado. You guys are the MVPs and everybody down there in the description. A big thank you to you guys as well. Sweet dreams, everybody.